Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another video. Now, if you may remember a couple of weeks to a couple of months back, Lionel Sebastian did a video on essentially a 10900K and what it takes to cool one. But, now that me thinking, 3950X, it doesn't come with a cooler out of the box. And as you may have noticed, I have collected a load of AMD stock coolers as well as my NHD15. So really, if AMD had provided you with a cooler, how much do you really need to cool it? And on top of that, does the old theory that I've heard that it's easier to cool than a Ryzen 7 really stack up when you go ahead and put the cooler for a Ryzen 7 on top of it. So, it's going to be interesting. I'll go ahead and do a jump cut in a second to change you over to the first cooler which we'll be doing, which will be our little baseline with the AMD Wraith Stealth Cooler. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Also, these two, the prop coolers that we're really interested in, they've got their stock film face, so you can actually also see whether that makes a difference too. All this and more, one after the intro and two after we've gone ahead and swapped this out. Okay, so here we are, we've got the side panel open. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out the NHD15, replace it with the stealth cooler, which is sat over there, and yeah, probably not gonna talk much for this. So enjoy, I guess. Anything left to do is start getting the tools and start getting this pulled apart. And that is the first change of many. So, right, we've now got the Wraith's stealth cooler attached. It looks absolutely puny in there. You can barely see it all the way in the back. Time to see how it performs. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to run, see, 15, either 15 or 30 minutes of OCCT's power, well, power virus test, and we will go ahead and see how it handles. If not, we will come up with something else. But yeah, that's what we do. So we can go ahead and stop here until we are ready with it, set to go. Right, so what we're also going to do is it's going to have my standard fan curve. So it's going to be the same across all tests. It's not the stock fan curve because this case is too hot for a stock fan curve. So it's going to be my standard personal one. We're all loaded up and time to see how it performs in a second. So I'm just going to set you to one side whilst I get into the benchmark. Also, wow, this thing is running hot right out of the gate. Let's see, what are we actually sitting at? Make sure that we are running at stock. So we're just going to open up Ryzen Master. Do, 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 do. Make sure we're running at stock. Uh, okay. OC mode, default. Graphics card, 1080 Ti. Resolution, 1920 by 1080. Already at 70 degrees. This is going to throttle hard, isn't it? Okay. Beginning. Yeah, because I really don't expect this to last long. Ten minutes each test. Okay, so we're already hitting up to 84 degrees C, where we've not even started for that long. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the recording here and start back in a bit once it is nearly finished. Okay, and um, we are approaching the end of the test. It's not actually that bad. Like, granted, this is definitely far worse than you'd ever like, considering the fact that this is running at 95 to C, 95C, but it's not really dropped that much. It's only dropped by just under 1 gigahertz. Because remember, the base speed for this is 3.5 gigahertz. Generally speaking, it will always stick at that stock base speed as long as you've got good cooling. So the fact that it's only dropped around about 1 gigahertz, that, that's not too bad, and it's going to cause bounce up in a second. Obviously on extended load, you'd expect this to drop even more, but so far, it's actually looking pretty respectable, so not bad. That stealth cooler is a lot better than I thought it'd be. Obviously, this is far from ideal. I do not recommend anybody does this, but yeah, shockingly capable. Just go ahead and wait for the test to finish, and then we can move on to the next CPU. And our final clock speed after 10 minutes is... ...2.54 gigahertz, that's not bad. And obviously it's going to cool down rapidly and that's going to clock up straight back up. 
But yeah, that's not bad. I'd say that's actually pretty acceptable considering how ridiculous, uh, how ridiculously overwhelmed it was going to be from the get-go. So, okay, we'll go ahead and jump to the next CPU in the test. Okay, we've got the case open, we've got the back open so I can get to that back plate. We'll remove the cooler now, don't even have to set the graphics card out this time so the next one's basically the same size. Okay, can grab the tools and just start going away at this. Now we are on to the Wraith Spire. As you can see, it's a lot fatter than the Wraith Stealth. Now, considering the Wraith Stealth didn't do too bad a job, considering this is around about twice as big a fin stack, I'm hoping that this is actually going to be sufficient enough to actually cool this. Not cool it well, but cool it enough to maybe not thermal throttle. I guess we'll find out in a couple of seconds. Just got to go ahead and install it first. Okay, this is now the Wraith Spire that is now installed. It's ready to go, so we'll just go ahead and cut over to once we actually have done the testing and see how it holds up. Okay, we're coming towards the end of this test. Which, yeah, you can name it. Uh, okay, so we're coming towards the end of this test. This one actually went a lot better with the Wraith Spire cooler. Whereas the previous one, as you may remember, was running pretty damn toasty indeed at like 95C. Not to mention dropping down to two points, well... 6, 2.56, something like that. 2.56 gigahertz, whereas this one, its final speed at 88.5 degrees Celsius is 3.3 gigahertz. That is only a 200 megahertz drop. That's really not bad, considering that it's... You know, this is a ridiculously cheap cooler. Still, it's literally a, just a hunk of aluminum. Aluminum? Aluminium? Damn Americans, you got me saying aluminium. Or alum you know what I mean. Either way, it's basically just a chunk of aluminium. Yet, despite the fact that it is just a chunk of aluminium, with a fan attached to it, it actually performed pretty damn admirably. So, yeah, this has me really hopeful because we're going to be moving on to the Wraith Prism or Wraith Max, whatever it's actually called, the proper official name. Either way, I'm happy. I'm actually fairly confident that a Wraith Prism will be a very good choice for this CPU if you just want a cooler to get it up and running. Not to mention it'll look pretty stylish, so... Yeah, we'll go ahead and cut it here and jump back when we are changing over our cooler. Okay, we are here with the Wraith Stealth Cooler. We're now going to move over to the Wraith Prism. So what we have to do is, one, take the graphics card out so we can go ahead and get to remounting the proper AM4 mounting hardware, or the original mounting hardware, or the other one, really cool, the two clips either side. So we'll need to take the graphics card off, we'll need to go ahead and place this cooler, put that back in, and we'll be ready for the next test. Wow, that was terrible. Wow. So, surprisingly, we actually got really crappy coverage. Now, as you can see, we got really bad mounting pressure up on this corner, which was secured down, but apparently it wasn't secured down well enough. But even with that massive issue there, somehow it's still sufficiently cooled the CPU. Okay, and that is the Wraith Prism installed. This is the last of the AMD stock coolers, and we can see if finally if this high-end option, which they give off with the 3900X, would actually suit the 3950X or not. Right, we'll go ahead and jump into the tests and see how it performs. All right, we are getting towards the end of this test, and surprisingly, the Wraith Prism, as you can clearly see, so far has not dropped at all to below 3.5 gigahertz, which means that this this cooler might actually be perfectly suited towards people that just want to, you know, to go ahead and use a 3950X. Yeah, so that's kind of impressive, because you can see the, yep, 3.5 gigahertz all the way to the end. That's actually really impressive. It starts to make me wonder, my next point on, why didn't AMD include one of these, considering that it's become very obvious that it runs perfectly fine with one. In fact, it looks almost ideal for it. Well, we'll probably get into that in a bit, but for now... 
yeah, it looks great. Actually looks great. So, yeah. On to changing out to my final cooler of choice, my actual cooler that I use for this, which is the NHD15, which may help to enunciate my point on why AMD didn't choose to add one of these. Alright, so I've already gone ahead and prepared this ready to accept the NHD15. The only thing that we have to do is paste this up. Once the paste is on there, we can throw on the HD15. And then we can do the final battery of tests. We're going to have to put in the NHD15 before we can put in the graphics cards because it's just the way it is for that. And then we will go ahead and finish up this video. Okay, cooler, reinstalled, everything ready to go. We will jump to the final test and then we will go ahead and get to the conclusion and outro. Okay, we are coming to the end of the last test with the NHD15. It is absolutely boiling in here, so it's probably a few degrees hotter than it was when we were testing the Wraith Prism. But what, can, what I can say, however, is that despite that, it's still running slightly cooler by about one or two degrees. Now, some people might call that a test variance, but so far, I'd say that's actually a reasonable drop. It's doing that one temperature of the room, temperature of the room has actually gone up. Finished up there at 3.5 gigahertz towards the end there. And you know what? I say I'm damn well impressed. Like, gr granted, I understand why AMD did what they did, but we will get into that in the conclusion for now. Those are what the results were. Time to go ahead and put it all together for you guys. So, you've seen a lot. Now, I should probably quickly go back over what happened with all of them so you can refresh your memories. Right, starting off then with the Wraith Stealth Cooler, this dropped down to 2.75 GHz after it hit 95 degrees Celsius, but it didn't crash the system and it did still run. This over here, the Wraith Spire, this however did not reach Thermal Max, which was 95C. This actually hit around about 86 to 87C and dropped around about 1 to 200 MHz. Not too bad and actually quite serviceable. I mean, if you're in a pinch, it works well enough. I personally wouldn't suggest it because... You know, 86 degrees, it's still pretty damn hot, but it works well enough if you're in a pinch. Over on the far side, we have got the Wraith Prism, again, an actually excellent choice, and it starts to make me wonder why AMD didn't go ahead and put one in the box, because I didn't realise this until after I took it off. I didn't even set it to the high mode. The setting that you saw whilst it was hitting 3.5 gigahertz and around about 72, 73 degrees Celsius, that was whilst it was still in the low speed mode, which means that, gem honestly... I don't see why AMD didn't include one because it is very obvious that it's more than enough to sufficiently cool a 3950X at full load. Now granted, you probably won't get any overclocking headroom out of it, but it's still the fact that it can do it, why wasn't it included? And then moving on, finally, we've got the NHD15, which is obviously the thing that they would recommend, you know, a big beefy air cooler or water cooling. Now obviously this didn't drop too many degrees off that, but in fairness it was a hot, you know, hotter in the room at the time. Not to mention that whilst this obviously were roughly the same temps, this has got a lot more cooling capacity, which means that whilst this will cool it whilst it's running at stock speeds and maybe a tiny little overclock, this you can actually properly overclock on, pulling up to, well, in my case, over 200 watts without it, you know, overheating. So it's a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a mixed bag. How much does it take to reasonably cool a 3950X? If you aren't doing any real work, one of these will do. If you are doing real work all the time and you know that you're going to be doing it all the time, get yourself a very, very nice Wraith Prism. Or if you want to really overclock it and, you know, push it to the max, get an NHD15. I will also put a couple of charts up on the screen for you whilst we're talking through this bit. So, of course, you've got some references to the results that we've seen so far. Me, personally, I'm always going to recommend the Noxia. Because don't get me wrong, whilst I do love these AMD stock cores and they are cheap as chips, I just simply prefer not to, not to mention the whole lifetime warranty stuff. Well, not lifetime warranty, six year warranty plus lifetime support. Now, granted though, if you do, I don't know, say you've got a 3900X and you've upgraded to a 3950X, you don't really need to buy a new cooler if you've already got a Wraith Prism. You know, it's something that you can cross off what you're doing. Or if you just happen to have one laying around or your friend lo loans you one, it's more than good enough. If you can get your hands on one relatively cheaply, I'd say it's actually the better choice out of the two, unless of course you actually want to overclock, then you do need a lot more thermal headroom to really be able to do that. So it's a bit of a mixer, but you can also run it on one of these, I don't recommend it. It would probably run on eco mode, but I wouldn't want to go ahead and really try that out properly. 
But, of course, this is where I'm going to call the video, because I've been doing a lot of filming. I'm boiling. I need to go ahead and open the windows. <laughs> so, I will catch you all in the next one. So, let's call the end of the video here. So, anyway, like the video if you like it, dislike if you dislike it. Maybe go ahead and check out my Patreon to support me, so I can go ahead and do more projects like this in the future. Maybe check out my Discord page and go ahead and join the Folding at Home team there. Maybe check out my Facebook and my Twitch if you want to go ahead and see more content from me. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell to stay tuned for more from me. And as always, this is the 117th Con signing off. Stay safe, folks. I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, take care.